Hello there and welcome to this video on the BRK Ghost. In this video we're going to be detailing a full disassembly of the rifle as well as giving you any information you need as we walk through the process. Before we get started on that though, on your screen now will be a complete list of all the tools that we're going to use in order to carry out this disassembly. It includes all the allen key sizes, all the spanner sizes and finally any BRK tooling required to complete the job. The final thing that I want to mention before we get started is that this particular rifle is a sub 12 foot pound 2.2 compact ghost. Although the information in this video will also be relevant to the FAC models and also different calibers. With that all said, we can get started. The first thing we're going to do is take a note of the current set pressure of the regulator. On this rifle, it's 80 bar. Next, we're going to fire the rifle into a nice safe backstop. That'll just ensure that there's not a pellet loaded into the barrel and the rifle is safe to work on. The next thing we're going to do is degas the rifle. We're going to do that by simply removing the bottle. And with that done, we see that the gauge on this side, which is the bottle pressure gauge, is reading zero. However, the gauge on this side, which is our reg pressure gauge, is still showing pressure in the regulator. What we need to do to get rid of that is either dry fire the rifle until this gauge reads zero or we can loosen this gauge here. To do that we're going to use a 22mm spanner and just crack the gauge loose. Once the hissing stopped we can remove the gauge completely, being nice and careful not to lose the doughty washer that seals on the gauge there. And if you had a leak emanating from either of the gauges, you'd simply need to replace the doughty washer seal. We are going to remove the pressure gauge whilst we're here. And we're going to be doing that again with a 22mm spanner. Next up we'll remove the barrel and the pellet probe. To remove the barrel we simply need to loosen this scrub screw at the back of the rifle here. And with that loose we can pull the barrel out the front. like so. To remove the pellet probe we simply need to move the bolt back, cock the rifle, then loosen and remove this screw in the back using a 2mm allen key. With the screw removed the pellet probe can just be simply tipped out the back of the rifle and then we can decock the rifle. If you were doing a simple calibre change you would not need to degas the rifle or remove the gauges. You could do so whilst the rifle was pressurised. Next thing we'll do is disassemble the shroud. First thing we'll do is remove these two grub screws in the base of the shroud here using a 2.5mm allen key. With those removed the calm fibre shroud can be slid off. and we can stick this over to one side. Next thing we'll do is remove the front support and the stripper for the shroud. To do that I'm just going to be using a plastic o-ring pick, getting it in the end there and then just cracking it loose. They can be done up quite tight from the factory so you may need to keep the barrel in the block and do it while it's, it's all built up. We can remove the brass stripper from the end of this piece here. We do so by removing the o-ring then using a 2mm allen key to just loosen the two retaining grub screws. With those loose the brass section can be pushed back and removed from the end. Up next we'll remove the back support for the shroud and that's done by simply loosening the two securing grub screws. That's again done using a 2.5mm allen key. And there we have the barrel fully disassembled. We do still have the transfer port o-ring in this end of the barrel and if this was leaking or needed to be replaced you would feel a small puff of air every time you took a shot. This o-ring here should seal around the pellet probe and stop any air escaping back when the rifle is shot. But there we have it, we'll stick the barrel to one side and bring back the block. The only other thing that I want to mention in regards to the barrel is that we have two o-rings in the block just around this area here and they seal around the OD of the barrel. And we do also have a third O-ring in the front section of the block here. Now this isn't a sealing O-ring, this is just to centralise the barrel within the block. 
but I'll get you a better look at the two O-rings in the back here when we've removed the top rail in this back section. For now though, to make the rifle a little easier to handle, I'm going to be removing the top rail, the grip and the cheek piece. To remove the top rail, we need to use a 3mm Allen key to loosen these four bolts here. With those loosened, we can slide off the top rail and put that to one side. Next, we'll remove the cheek piece by loosening these two grub screws in the top here using a 2.5mm Allen key. With that done, the final thing we'll do is remove the grip. We're going to do that by popping this little window here open using an Allen key. Then we can remove this section from the base of the grip and then by using a 4mm Allen key we can remove the retention screw. The final thing we'll do is remove this little spacer piece here and whilst we're talking about the grip I will mention that it's an AK pattern grip so if you're looking for a replacement grip, just make sure you buy an AK one. With that done, the next thing we're going to do is remove the regulator from the front of the rifle. So this piece here. To do that, we're going to be using our regulator removal tool. Now this is the same as the Daystate one, although Humor have recently changed the pin spacing for the regulator itself. So if your tool doesn't fit or doesn't quite fit, you just need to give it a few gentle taps with a hammer just to get the pins situated. Once it's unscrewed we can pull the reg out nice and simply. If you didn't have the tool you could also use a set of snap ring pliers. With the regulator removed we can start on disassembling it. The first thing we're going to remove is the adjuster screw from the end. We're going to do that with the use of a flat bladed screwdriver. When this all the way out we can pull it out and then put our finger over the hole here. This regulator does have a white sealing disc in the middle there and we don't want to lose that. Next thing we'll do is take an M4 bolt and screw that lightly into the base of the regulator piston. Next we can pull the piston out from the bottom of the regulator and there we have our white sealing disc along with our Belleville stack. So I'll get you a close up there so you can see how the Belvilles are stacked. There's eight Bellevilles in this regulator and they're cupped in pairs in alternating groups. What we'll do next is go over where each of the O-rings leak from if they do end up going bad. Starting on the reg body, these two rearward O-rings here, if they go bad, will leak out of this bleed hole in the side of the block. If the front one goes bad, it will just simply leak out of these threads here to atmosphere. On the adjuster screw we have two o-rings this front one if this goes bad air will be able to leak through these threads here out to atmosphere if the back one goes bad this one here this will cause the regulator pressure to equal bottle pressure we have two on the regulator piston here the front one and the back one will both leak through this hole here if they end up going bad and finally, the white sealing disc, this piece here, will need to be replaced if your regulator has excessive amounts of creep. With that done and out of the way, we'll put this to one side and continue on with a block. What we'll do next is separate this back section from the main block assembly. To do that, first thing we're going to do is loosen and remove these two screws here using a 2.5mm Allen key. With those removed we can flip the block on its end and then gently pull the trigger in order to loosen this cassette here. Next we're going to remove this grub screw in the side. That's done using a 3mm allen key. And then we're going to remove the four securing bolts in the top block here. With that done we can gently pull the back block and separate the two halves. At this stage I will mention that if we look in this brass section here we do have a small pin which can get lost if you're not careful. So what I like to do is just push it out at this stage and then put it in a nice safe location just so it doesn't get lost. There is a second pin in this pellet probe block here. On some rifles this is loose, other rifles this is tight. This one is fairly loose so I'm just going to push that out as well just so it doesn't get lost. With that done, we'll get the back assembly fully disassembled. First thing we'll do is remove the butt pad, and that's done by removing this screw in the back. And as you do this, just keep your finger over the square nut in the back. 
with the bolt loose, you can drop the square nut out and put that over to one side. Next thing we'll do is separate these two pieces here. To do that, we need to loosen four screws. So two in the top here, using a three millimeter Allen key. Then a third in the middle. And then finally, as this is a sub 12 rifle, we do have the three pin anti-temper bolt to remove. And to do that, I'm going to be using the three pin anti-temper tool. And it just fits in the screw head like so. And then we can use an eight mil spanner just to crack it loose. Now on FAC rifles, this bolt will just be a standard bolt. But as this is a sub 12 rifle, they use this anti-temper bolt. With that loose, we can pull this section off and the two blocks are separated. We can stick this over to one side. Next, we'll remove the power wheel and the hammer spring from the back here. The hammer spring can just be tipped out. As you remove the power wheel, just make a note of this ball bearing here. It can fall out if you're not careful. And this particular rifle does have a power washer. So this is used from the factory to fine adjust the power of the rifle. So it's fitted to this one, but it's not fitted to all rifles. We can disassemble this a little further. If we take a two mil Allen key and remove this grub screw here, we can then remove the outer housing of the power wheel from the inner section. Now, as you remove this, be very careful as there is a total of four ball bearings in this assembly, two on either side. So two have come out already, and then there are two, one in either side, hiding in these holes here. So just make a note of that if you do end up needing to take it apart. It's not one of those things that you're gonna be taking apart regularly, but if you did need to take it apart, that's how you would do it. Next up, we can flip the block up and remove this bush from the back here. We're gonna be removing the three securing screws using a two and a half mil Allen key. With the three screws removed, we can remove the bush from the back and then we can remove the hammer. To remove the hammer, we need to use a two millimeter Allen key and loosen these two grub screws here. These don't need to be removed fully, they just need to be loosened. With them loose, we can just tip the hammer out from the back and the cocking dog should come out with it. So there are them two pieces there. And that's this rear section fully disassembled. So we'll get this put to one side and continue on with the block. Next thing we'll do is remove the cocking arm and the top rail. To do that, we'll flip the block on its end and remove the six securing screws on the top rail. To do that, we're gonna be using a three millimeter Allen key. With all six bolts loosened, we can take the top rail off, gently lift it up and put it over to one side. The next thing we'll do is take this cover piece off, put that over to one side, and then we can lift the pellet probe assembly up and off the rifle. As you take this off, just make sure this little bush in the cocking arm doesn't get lost. So we'll push that out. And then the last thing we'll do is remove the cocking arm from the pellet probe assembly. To do that, we're gonna be using a flat bladed screwdriver to remove this screw here. There we have it. So there's the cocking arm and the cocking handle removed. We could remove the cocking handle if we wanted to by using a three millimeter Allen key, just to crack it loose. This particular one was fairly tight as it was Loctite in from the factory. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the valve from the back of the block here. Now you can remove the valve without having to take the top rail off, although it's a lot easier to remove if you take the top rail off. To remove it, what we're gonna do is come through with our valve removal tool, this one here, get that lined up with the pins in the nut, and then loosen that using a 19 mil spanner. If you didn't have the tool, you could use a set of snap ring pliers. With that done, I'm gonna take a set of snap ring pliers, lightly grip the outside of the valve, and then gently pull it out from the block. Here we have it there. Next thing we'll do is disassemble the valve. First thing we'll do is remove these two O-rings from the front of the valve here. 
Then we're going to locate this retaining ring here and rotate it around to one of the cutouts. When you do that, the two halves of the valve should separate themselves. And then we can take the valve return spring out as well as the valve pin, which is this piece here. Up next, we can lift this back section up and just remove this plug from the bottom, which is that there. And then in the base there, we do still have a small O-ring, which can be just hooked out. Now, there are a number of different versions of this valve, and the FAC and sub-12 valves are slightly different. With that done, I just very briefly want to go over the difference between the sub-12 valve and the FAC valve. Now, there have been some minor revisions to both the FAC and the sub-12 rifles, and we're not going to be going over all the differences in this video. The main difference that I wanted to point out to you was the difference in the valve pins. As you can see, the sub-12 valve pin is a lot shorter than the FAC one, and if we look at the FAC one, we see it has an additional O-ring at the back here. This O-ring seals within this back housing, like so. Now this back half of the valve is depressurized, or just at atmospheric pressure, and what this does is make the valve easier to open, as there's not regulator pressure forcing the valve closed. It's just being forced closed by valve return spring pressure. What this does is make the valve easier to open and allow the rifle to achieve more power. Something that we're very interested in on FAC rifles, but we're not so interested in on sub-12 rifles. But whilst they have their minor differences, both the FAC and the sub-12 valve come apart and go back together in exactly the same way. With that done, next thing that we'll discuss is where each of the O-rings leak from if they do end up going bad. So in the sub-12 rifle, we have three O-rings in this back section here, the two external ones and the one in the middle there. If any one of these three O-rings fail, air will come out of the bottom of the block through this small hole here. Now this is normally covered over by the trigger linkage and a small plastic cover piece, but I'll show you how to remove that very shortly. But if any one of those three O-rings have failed, they'll be leaking through here. The same goes for the FAC valve. So we have the two on the back here, then the one on the valve pin. If any one of these three O-rings is leaking, they'll leak through that bleed hole. Next up, we have this O-ring around the front of the valve housing. If this one has failed, air will be able to travel from the reg pressure side of the valve through to the barrel. So air will be able to leak through the valve into the barrel and to atmosphere. Similarly, if you have a bad seal between your firing valve and the valve housing, air will also be able to leak from the air pressure side into the barrel side. The next three O-rings, so these two here, which are situated on the front of the valve housing, and this one around the valve pin, all are unpressurized O-rings. They only see pressure when the rifle is fired, and if any one of these three O-rings has failed, when you fire the rifle, you will be able to feel a small puff of air emanating from the valve area when the rifle is fired. The same goes for the FAC valve pin, which has a slightly different O-ring. With that all done, we'll put this to one side and continue on with the block. Next up, we'll remove the bottom rail and the fill pole. First thing we'll do is remove the bottom rail by loosening these three screws here using a 3mm Allen key. With all three of them removed, we can lift the bottom rail up and pull off the dust cover. Next thing we'll do is use a deep 10mm socket to remove the fill pole. Now we have the fill valve removed from the rifle. It does have a doughty washer on the base there and there is a one-way valve present in the unit. To remove the one-way valve, what I'm going to be using is an airline blower. I'll put that on the top there and then momentarily pressurize the unit. What that'll do is force the one-way valve out from the bottom of this unit here. Now if you didn't have an airline blower, you could also use a dive cylinder with a whip connected, you would connect that to your foster fit in here and momentarily pressurize the unit. Now, when you do that, be sure to have the unit on a nice solid surface, such as a wooden table or, or something similar, and you only need to momentarily pressurize it. 
And again, being nice and careful, as when this unit is pressurized, the one-way valve will want to fly out. If the doughty washer on the base of the unit has failed, you'll see air leaking from this area here. If the o-ring on the base of the one-way valve has failed, you'll see air leaking through this hole here. So just be aware of that. With that done, next thing we'll do is remove the trigger. To do that, we'll remove these two screws using a two millimeter Allen key. With those removed, we can take a plastic o-ring pick and gently push on this side of the safety, wiggling it free and then taking the safety unit and the trigger plate out as one piece. Next thing we'll do is flip the block over and remove the trigger pin, this one here. To do that, I'm gonna be using a set of pliers. Now these can be quite tight from the factory, so just be very careful as you remove it. With that pin removed though, the trigger blade and the trigger assembly can be slid out of the bottom. As you remove it, just be careful that the small spring and this little brass cup here doesn't get lost. So just be aware that's in that little hole there. With that done, the last thing we'll remove from the rifle is this little plastic cover piece here. To do that, we're gonna be taking a flat bladed screwdriver and just gently pushing it out from the back of the rifle. And with that done, we can lift the trigger linkage up slightly and that exposes the valve bleed hole which we showed earlier. So there that is there. The last thing to remove from the rifle would be the sear here. Although these are pressed in from the factory and are incredibly difficult to remove, so we're not gonna be removing it in this video. Under normal service conditions, you will never need to remove this pin or this linkage from the rifle. The only other things still installed on the rifle are the bottle valve, which is this piece at the front here. To remove that, you would need to use a 25 mil spanner, get it across the flats and then crack it loose. They are done up via, with Loctite from the factory and are normally very tight, so we're not gonna be removing it in this video. And the last thing that I want to point out is the two transfer port O-rings. So we have one at the front here, then another about 10 to 15 mil back from the front one. So if those, either one of those O-rings are leaking, what will happen is you'll feel a small puff of air as you take a shot. So these two O-rings here seal on either side of the barrel transfer port, one at the front, one at the back. And when you take a shot, they stop air from leaking out from around the barrel. With that all said and done, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. So thank you for watching. I hope it's been useful and we'll see you in the next one.